Okay, now we're going to look at the derivation of gravitational potential energy. Again, we're going to use the concept of work being the amount of energy that's put into the object. But this time, unlike the last video, instead of viewing uh, that work being put into um, speeding up the object or acceleration, this time we're going to put that work into raising the object by some unknown height. So here's our object of mass m. And if we want it to move up, what we're going to assume is that it's moving with a constant velocity. That way we're not spending any energy speeding it up. We're not losing any energy by it slowing down. We're going to just assume that it's moving up constantly. If that's the case, then if V is constant, what that means is that my acceleration is zero. With the acceleration of zero, according to Newton's first law, If A equals zero, then that means that the net force acting on the object is equal to zero, or the forces are balanced. With that in mind, we can recognize that there's a force of gravity acting on this object, which is equal to negative 9.8, uh, negative 9.8 newtons per kilogram times the mass or sometimes people will write this as g times the mass. And whatever applied force that we have that's doing work to this object must then be equal to that. So it must be equal to 9.8 newtons per kilogram times the mass. Now we want to move this object from some base height that we're going to call height 0 all the way up to our arbitrary height h. So what that means is the distance that it's going to travel from one location to the other is h. So now we have an applied force and we have a distance. We're ready to use our work formula. Work equals force times distance, which is going to be equal to 9.8 newtons per kilogram times the mass times the height. Or some people like to leave this as g and say that this formula is mgh. With that in mind, since this work has been gone has all gone into raising this object up or taking it to a point where gravity wants to do work on it or giving it gravitational potential energy, this is our formula for e g. Now a tiny side note here, we're not going to get into this right now. But since I've used g, if you'll recall from when we learned about the force of gravity, this means near the surface of the Earth. So since this equation is using this g, this equation is only going to apply near the surface of the Earth as well. There it is.